Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to learn how to use the TI-89 calculator and specific we're going to learn how to store variables and use those in calculations. It's a very simple process but it's one of those things you don't typically dig out of your manual until you've already you know used the calculator for so long and uh, it's something that if you know in the beginning it can actually save you a lot of time. So it's going to go to the home menu. Basically what you need to know is all of these buttons down here have a letter above it A, B, C, D, E and so on all the way to Z now X, Y and Z are actually up here on their own specific buttons and also T and that's just because these letters are they're not really special it's just that they're used a whole lot more often than some of these other letters you know when you're graphing equations you're always doing functions of X um, if you're graphing three-dimensional equations, you'll use X, Y, and Z, and T is typically used for time a whole lot. So these letters are used so often they're given their own buttons, but it's the same thing as all of these other letters down here, and they can be used in the same way. So let's say you're doing a calculation, and you just happen to know that you're using uh, uh, some velocity, let's say, that you're going to, to be using a lot. You're doing some problem, and you have a velocity, and you're going uh, 5.12 meters per second, and you're plugging in 5.12 meters per second into these equations all day long, and you're really sick and tired of typing in 5.12 meters per second all the time. Well, what you can do is just put 5.12 on the stack like that and press this store button. This is what this means. S-T-O means store. You press it and all you see is a little arrow. And what it's telling you is I want to store the value of 5.12 into some variable that I can, I can do whatever I want. Let's say I want to store it in the letter A just because that's just the one I think about. So I need to put A on the stack and it's a letter so I have to hit the alpha button so I press that once and then I hit this button to put A so now when I hit execute it's going to store this value into the variable that I've sort of created A so let me go ahead and hit enter and what you get as a result is basically the value that you stored and it's now here and, and this means that it was successful so let's clear this let's clear everything out and so now if I'm calculating uh, something with A I can check the value that's in this variable A if I just put it on the stack here and hit enter is now 5.12 if I want to take A and add it to 5 then I can hit enter and it's going to take the 5.12 and add 5 to it and that's what you're going to get if I'm going to do something more complicated like let's say uh, A minus 2 times A and let's say I'm going to do something crazy and raise that to the second power uh, and then I hit enter it's going to do all the math there and I'm going to get a nice answer out of it so it's not doing anything other than what you could do by just typing 5.12 in here but it saves you a lot of time and it's really convenient if you're doing very large numbers let's say you have you know 2.36589 uh, times 10 to the negative 8. Now see that would be really cumbersome to put into uh, to put into a bunch of parentheses but if you just store it in a variable let's go ahead and put this one in B then I hit enter and now that's stored I can go and clear the stack off and now I'm free to do whatever I want I can do let's say B and I can square that and then I can subtract uh, let's do B raised to the third power and I can close the parentheses and I can raise the whole thing to the uh, one half power basically taking the square root of the whole thing now this would be very cumbersome to put that long number to the squared and then subtract that long number cubed and then raise the whole thing to the one half power but I can simplify it quite a bit calculator does all of the heavy lifting uh, knowing that the value of B is given by what I've already stored in there now look in this particular case the value of B is given by this and when I put it into this calculation it just happened to be the same value but if I go up here just to prove it to myself and highlight that and stick that back on the stack and maybe instead of to the uh, one half power I raise it to the one third power just so we can get a different answer and then so you're gonna get that of course you can do all kinds of crazy things and and raise this guy you can change this to uh, you know B to the fourth and I can change this over here instead of one third I can I can square it let's say if I want to and basically the calculator is going to go ahead and, and do the math there so it's much easier you see how I'm manipulating these equations with B instead of typing the long thing and that's really the the main advantage to it now this calculator can do something else that's pretty neat and that is that you can make a variable name that has multiple letters and that's useful 
So let's say you're in physics or doing some problem with motion and you have a velocity of 9.6547 meters per second. Now you could just store it in a single letter name, that's fine, but if you wanted to be more descriptive you could store it in a uh, velocity, you know, you could spell out VEL for velocity, let's say. So you want to go to alphanumeric mode and you want to go to alpha lock mode so that you can type multiple letters. There's two ways to go to alpha lock mode. You can hit second function and then this button for alpha lock and when you do that you'll see it's locked here, that's what that means. But another way to do it is just to hit the alpha one time that's going to put you in the temporary mode and then hit it again then you're going to go into the lock mode so you can just double tap this button to go into lock so now I can type in V E and then uh, L right there and I'll pop myself out of alphanumeric mode so now I've stored this variable in the velocity and so that's a little bit more descriptive so now if I want to go ahead and see what's in there I can double tap that I can type V E L just to make sure I have stored the velocity in here that I want and now I can do all kinds of things you know velocity uh, squared actually we're, we want to get out of that mode there so let's go ahead and take it out of alphanumeric mode so I'll backspace over and hit velocity squared you know and I could go you know plus five if I want to and it'll go ahead and calculate the answer velocity squared plus five and that is a lot more you know uh, down to earth as far as what you might name a variable you can name a variable anything you want and it'll be um, you know a neat thing there so that is basically how you store variables this is a very useful feature of the calculator let me go show you one more thing and that is basically or two more things this calculator is going to keep the values that you store in these variables basically forever until you either delete the variable entirely or you overwrite it so this value of 9.6547 is going to be stored into this variable name for as long as I want um, until I tell it otherwise. So just to do something a little bit simpler, let's go ahead and store 7 in the value A uh, just to kind of give you, give you something else. Now let me show you how to actually delete a variable entirely. So right now if we go, because we've made the store, storage, if we go into variable A we have the value of 7. Now if you go into this var link menu down here, think of it as a variable menu, second function var link, then it's basically telling you under the heading of main, these are the variables that I have stored here. And these are basically the variables that I have uh, stored in the calculator. So if I want to totally erase variable A, I just go to F1, which is manage, and then I hit delete. So I hit that, and then I hit enter for yes it's to ask me do I want to delete a and I hit yes now if I go down for highlight velocity and then I hit F1 and I hit delete it's asking me do I want to delete this velocity variable I hit yes there's nothing else listed here under main so then um, I go ahead and quit and now just to go ahead and test it out I go ahead and put the variable a back on the stack and instead of seven just the, var the, the variable A pops back up again because nothing is stored in there. It's pretty rare in my opinion that you actually go into the var menu and delete it entirely because it, it doesn't really hurt anything for you to keep these values stored in these variables. It just depends on how you want to manage your calculator. I usually didn't really delete them all that much but you know everybody has their own way. Maybe you prefer to go ahead and purge it periodically. One more thing I'll tell you any of these letters A through Z are totally legal to use for variables just like I said you can also spell names but you might want to be careful about using X Y Z or T for variable names you can use them I mean I can take the the, the number six and I can store it into X and that's fine and I have to put X back on the stack and hit enter the variable is stored there so you can use them but here's the problem eventually you're going to start graphing in this calculator and when you go to the graph menu y equals you're going to put your graphs in terms of the var variable x because that's usually the independent variable and so when you're in the graph menu um, when you start graphing functions especially if you start calculating the slope of lines and using the graphical capabilities of the calculator then it could temporarily wipe out the values that you've stored into some of these variables because it's using them as it's using the graphing functions of the calculator so you might be surprised if you store a value here in X and then you go off and do a bunch of graphing functions and then come back and then your value of X is gone and overwritten with something else so my opinion is don't do that. Just sort of stay away from using these guys. Use A, B, or C, or any of these other letters, or spell your own variable names out. Uh, it'll, it'll be better. 
Now let me show you one more thing. Let me store the number 10 in the value of a. This is more of a gotcha than anything else. So I've stored the variable 10, value of 10 in the variable a. This calculator is pretty smart with regards to algebra. So right now I've got the value of 10 stored in the variable a. Now obviously, if I say 5 times a, 5, 5 times 10, right, because 10 is in the var variable a, then I'm going to get an answer of 50. That's completely what I expect. Now if I go in here, instead of 5 times a, and if I just put 5a right next to each other, right, with no multiplication between them, then it's smart enough to know that that's implied multiplication, just like algebra, and it'll do exactly the same thing. It'll interpret it the same way. So when students start using this calculator, it's tempting just to start using this function and not putting your multiplication symbols in all the time. I personally recommend that you always press the multiply button all the time, and here's why. If you mess up and forget about this and get careless, what if you put the value instead of 5a, what if you accidentally put a5? Because after all, if it understands that 5a is 5 times a, then it should understand that a5 is a times 5. But when you put this in here, it doesn't understand what that means. So you could get confused. Here's another example. Um, I have 10 stored in the value of a. Let's put 4 in the value of b. So now I have a value in a, and I have a value in b. If I go and do a times b, then it's going to multiply them together and we're going to get 40. That's going to be exactly what I expect. But if I don't put the multiplication symbol there, if I put a, b together, which in algebra you might look at that and say, well, that's just a times b. But when you put it in here, the calculator isn't going to understand that it's implied multiplication. And the reason is because I already told you, you can spell variable names out with multiple letters. So it's going to look at these letters as sort of like a variable name, just like our velocity variable. It's going to assume that there's nothing stored in it because you've never stored anything in that variable. And it's going to just put it there and not know what to do. So yes, it's tempted, tempting to put things like 5b and look real cute and clever in your calculator that you're using algebra and not having to put your multiplication symbol but in my opinion it eventually will lead to frustration on your part so I personally just press the multiplication key all the time and um, and live with that and it seems to work really well I'm Jason I hope you've learned something from this section we've learned how to store variables into letter names we've learned how to erase variables we've learned how to overwrite variables we've learned how to make uh, variable names of 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 a uh, very of a uh, multiple letters to make them descriptive uh, and we've learned how to use them in calculations it's something that can help you and, and save you a lot of time on your test